New Zealand, Aotearoa, a small Pacific nation and one of the world's democracies. So what is a democracy? Well, I guess a democracy is having every adult in the country having a say in what's going to happen. Probably one person, one vote. We can choose who we want in government. Democracy means freedom and ability to make choices. A right in the say of the determination of the future. Uh, freedom for all. Um, egality. At its most simple, a democracy gives us the opportunity to elect someone who can speak on our behalf about how our country is run. We get that opportunity to vote once every three years. What's good about it? It's the opportunity to make a difference. The right not to have uh, draconian uh, legislation. It sort of stops dictatorships from happening and, and that sort of thing. Freedom for little businesses and big businesses. We can do, say and publish what we want, all as long as it's legal. And we elect representatives, MPs, to our parliament. But who runs the country? The caucus. Uh, the public. Well, the government runs the country, but in the end, people do. The people run the country. New Zealand's system of government was inherited from Britain, and it's set in the 700 years of Westminster's governing history. But that system's been much modified to our needs in New Zealand, and it also takes account of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. New Zealand is a monarchy. Uh, we're a constitutional monarchy. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II is, by a decision of the New Zealand Parliament, Queen of New Zealand. But quite clearly, uh, she doesn't live here. She lives uh, about uh, 20,000 kilometres away. So, for practical purposes, the sovereign, uh, New Zealand's head of state, is represented in New Zealand by a governor general. It's an office with a lot of dignity, a lot of mana, not a great deal of power. Um, the governor general acts on the advice of the prime minister. The prime minister makes recommendations to the governor general. We make our own laws and the governor general signs them off as the representative of the sovereign. This makes them legal. The signing through parliament is known as the royal assent. Our present governor general is a lawyer and former ombudsman. The queen reigns whilst the government rules. Um, the queen uh, and her representative have a role uh, which is to preside whilst the government of the day make the decisions, uh, the government being uh, those who command a majority in the House of Representatives. The Governor-General can be consulted and give advice to a government, but it's essentially a figurehead role, there for constitutional and ceremonial purposes. So, to summarise, the Sovereign is the head of state, the Governor-General is the Sovereign's representative. The Queen reigns, but the government of the day rules. And the Governor-General advises the government, but has little power. So who does have the power? Businesses, trades, unions maybe, and uh, corporations and government. It's basically capitalism, money, public opinion. The public service, who are meant to be non-partisan and the politicians who are the makers of new laws and new policies. Our parliamentary system is based on the principle that power is distributed across three separate branches of government. First, the Executive Council. Its members are the government ministers who run the country. It includes the Prime Minister, Cabinet and a team of state servants. They develop policy, manage expenditure and recommend new law. Second, the legislature. This is Parliament, the elected MPs who debate and eventually vote to approve all new legislation. Parliament holds the executive, the government, to account. Finally, the judiciary. These are the senior lawyers who interpret and apply the law through their supporting court and tribunal structures. It's a funny thing about power, and that is whenever you speak to people who are in positions of power, they say, well, I'm not quite sure, you know, somebody else seems to run. But I think it's quite obvious that the most important body in New Zealand from the point of view of running the country is the cabinet. Uh, that's the executive branch of the New Zealand government. They make decisions, they make them uh, in secret, uh, there are no uh, minutes of the debate, there's no minutes of who said what in a cabinet meeting. The minutes record 
the decision. Now, a strong prime minister, an able prime minister, a prime minister who is at the top of her or his powers is probably the most powerful person in that powerful uh, body. But that power is kept in careful check. The three branches of government have separate powers and responsibilities so that one cannot take over the role of another. This is called the separation of powers. There is a, a check and a balance there. Um, the government uh, develops its policy and administers the legislation so it's putting into place its policy but it has to go to the House for authorisation for that policy. If it needs any new powers, that has to be done through the legislature. If it needs authority to spend or authority to raise taxes, that has to be done through going to Parliament and passing an Act. So the judiciary, on the other hand, is, is, is completely separate from both the executive and, the, and Parliament. There's a, a general principle that operates as the House is proceeding amongst its, uh, on its business, that it, it doesn't transgress onto any matters that are before the courts, and likewise, the courts don't criticise the House. So there's a, it's, a, it's a convention of mutual respect, really. So to summarise, there's three branches of government. The executive, made up of the Prime Minister, ministers and state servants who decide on policy. The legislature, the elected MPs who debate and pass legislation. And the judiciary, the country's senior lawyers who interpret and apply law. A government's power to run the country can be tested at any time. If there's a contentious issue, a special vote can be forced in Parliament. This is known as a vote of confidence. The ayes are 43, the noes are 49, the amendment is not agreed to, unlock the doors. The first of two confidence votes tonight and the most decisive. If the government loses, it can be the end of the road. Parliament is dissolved and we all get the chance to vote again for a new parliament. So how exactly is new law made? A new proposal is called a bill and any MP can attempt to introduce a new bill. First it's introduced to the House. Call on government order of the day number one. Misuse of drugs classification of BZP amendment bill, first reading. Uh, the Honourable Jim Anderton. <clears throat> I move that the misuse of drugs classification of BZP amendment bill... Once it's introduced, there's essentially a first reading and that reading and debate determines whether it goes any further and there's a, there's a process to go through second reading, select committees. Um, select committees are a very important part of the process because it's essentially where the public get to have a say. The public input is somewhere where New Zealand, I think, leads the world in the, in, the, in the way in which we deal with legislation. Almost every bill goes to a select committee and is open for public submission, so the public are able to participate in, in just about every piece of legislation that goes through. Now, that's not the case in every parliament. Misuse of drugs, classification of BZP amendment bill, second reading. It's helpful to go back to the origins of this bill to explain what these amendments do. In June 2005... After the, the second reading, the bill goes back to the committee for a final draft, an and then there's the third and final reading and vote. One vote in favour. Tito Phillip-Field? One vote in favour. Any other votes? <clears throat> the bill is then prepared for royal assent, and that's where I work through the bill to make sure that it is printed exactly as passed by the House and then send it on. With more signatures and the royal assent, the bill finally becomes an Act of Parliament and New Zealand law. So if you could make a new law, what would it be? And, you know, I think it would be a very good thing to get all the trucks off the road. No smoking. Um, public smoking as well. I think that's very bad. The law should encourage people who are working hard and with that comes the tax break as well. Everybody would have to be nice to each other. <laughs> uh, our judges do not have the right to discuss the constitutionality of government action. What judges in New Zealand can do and have done is discuss the legality of government action. But living in a democracy is much more than simply getting to vote. Citizens' rights are the very foundation of a democratic society. So what are your rights? To complain as much as I like, when I like, and not to get put in prison for it. If I do get the strife to have some sort of legal representation. Uh, to live in freedom, 
uh, without interference. In a, in a democracy, what we have is that uh, we have uh, the idea of the rights of citizens, for example, to speak, the rights of citizens not to be detained arbitrarily, uh, the rights of uh, citizens to legal representation. And there are many authorities to protect our interests. In legal proceedings, you can appeal to the High Court and the Employment Court for a second opinion. Ombudsmen exist to deal with complaints made against certain specified public bodies. There are commissioners to protect your rights, health and disability, human rights, race relations and privacy, backed up by the Human Rights Act and the Bill of Rights Act. And then there's MMP, where we get to have two votes. This has provided more parliamentary voices from wider backgrounds. I think it's a system that New Zealanders can have considerable pride in, although any democratic system does depend, and I think it's very important, it depends on vigilance. Then using rights to speak out, to object, to form political parties, to form pressure groups, to write to newspapers, to get onto television. Uh, and you know, the price of liberty is vigilance, uh, but I think New Zealand citizens are vigilant as well. To summarise, Democracy in New Zealand includes rights to speak freely, to protest, to make petitions, to speak before select committees, to appeal to the High Court, to have two votes and to have representation under the law.